What's up, heroes? My name is Silo Clone, and welcome back to Ace Academy. Let's see what Mayu is up to on this day of the Warp Tech interview. I wonder if Mayu was serious about playing the violin for me. I'm actually really curious how well she plays. I dial, dial Mayu's number. She answers the phone. Hello? Hey, Mayu. About that violin session. Um... Well... I'm ready to listen if you're ready to play. Uh, sorry, but my father is coming to visit again. And I have errands I need to run before he gets here. Lame. Wasn't her father just just here? Yes, he, he was just here after after the, uh, the, the qualifiers. Oh, he comes to visit often, doesn't he? There's a slight pause, and I'm positive she's nodding. He's an alumni of Ace and has regular business with the Dean, so he's here very often. That's that's actually quite impressive. Your father knows the Dean? Yeah, they were classmates here at Ace, but that's not why he's here so often. Ace has the strongest pilot program in Japan, so naturally, most of the graduates here are accepted into my father's military program. Your father does military? He and the Dean have been working together to build a bridging program between Ace and the Military College. That would make sense. And your father teaches at the Military College? Yep. That's pretty impressive, let alone intimidating. I knew Mayu's father was pretty distinguished based on what I'd heard about him, but I had no idea he was this distinguished. No wonder Mayu always seems worried or stressed when he comes to visit. I mean, it would be like if Hito Akimi came to visit. Wait a minute. Mayu? Uh? Your last name is Akimi. Um, yes? The same Akimi as Hito Akimi? You mean grandfather? Apparently, her family is very well known to our character. How can you say that so casually? I wish my grandfather was famous. This explains a lot. I wish my grandfather was famous. Let's, let's see how this works out. I bet you go to all the cool events since your grandfather's pretty much the founder of military piloting. I don't know about that. She hesitates. Although, I have gotten to meet some interesting people. Probably more interesting than me. Knew it. Anyway, I should get going. I'm sorry I can't play for you today. I'm sad now. That's okay. Are you free over the weekend? Maybe we can postpone until then. Sure. Oh, well, that that worked all too well. Too easily. Great. Don't back out on me, okay? I respond jokingly, but Mayu takes me seriously. I promise you will have your private show this weekend. That sounds dirty. Uh... Did she just say what I think she said? Uh, I mean, concert! I I'll play then! I mean, I'll play for you then! P play my violin! I, I understood. I'm just laughing to myself. I tried to hold back a laugh. Okay. I, I, I have to go! Bye! I bet her, red her face is as red as a tomato right now. She quickly ends the call. Although, I can't see her. I can imagine how adorable Mayu looks when she's flustered, and I'm a little disappointed to have missed it. We'll have to give her a hard time about it next time. Oh well. At least I have the weekend to look forward to. Yuna is already waiting for me at the library. A tablet with the SBA logo is clutched in her hand. Oh, it's time for the interview already. Apparently our talk with Mayu took a lot longer than expected. She smiles and breathes a sigh of relief when she sees me. Oh, good. You're still wearing your uniform. I forgot to tell you yesterday to wear it and remembered too late to text you. I mean, I've been on campus all day and I have to wear this here. Oh. I was so preoccupied on what I would say today that I forgot to think about what I'd wear. No worries. I hope my voice sounds more confident than I feel. Yuna notices the waver in my voice. She places a hand on my shoulder. The heat of her hand soothes my nerves, and I relax a little bit. Okay, well, are you ready to go? I, I, I mean, I'm here, so yes. Yeah. She starts towards the bus stop when I stop her. 
I can drive us. Are you sure? Yeah, let's go. It'll be quicker this way. She follows me into the parking lot and to my bike. Without a second thought, I hop on, but Yuna hesitates. What's wrong? Oh, nothing. I just didn't know you had a motorcycle and not a car. I don't think it ever came up in conversation. She gingerly slides onto the bike. Once she's settled, we speed off. Yuna directs me where to go and eventually tells me to park in front of an impressive building. It's narrow, but shoots straight towards straight into the sky, cutting through the clouds. A giant skyscraper. As we walk in, a perky receptionist greets us from behind her desk. Welcome to WorkTap Corporation. How may I help you? Yeah, Yuna, can, can you do the talking here? Yuna steps forward. I'm Yuna Misaki from Ace Academy's SBA. We have an appointment with Mr. Takeda. The receptionist smiles and gestures to the empty chairs. Of course. If you'll please take a seat, he'll be with you shortly. Thank you. As soon as we take our seats, the receptionist types a rapid sequence into her computer, then drags a document from her monitor onto her tablet and disappears into a hall in the back. I glance at Yuta. She's meticulously going over her notes. Are, are you nervous? She thinks for a minute. Not as much as I thought I'd be. Are you? Um, a little bit. I'm either really nervous or really hungry. Nobody can resist these pearly whites. Nerves are like feelings. They don't exist. Well, you know what? I'm either really nervous or I'm really hungry, and I'm not sure which one. It's been a while since I've had lunch. My stomach is in knots. Yuna smiles encouragingly. Don't worry. You'll do great. I mean, I've got you by my side, so I can't really fail. Her confidence helps me ease my nerves, and I smile back. I'm glad I have you here with me. A blush creeps into her cheeks, but she seems pleased. The receptionist comes back and gestures for us to follow her. Her ponytail bounces behind her as she walks briskly down the hall and directs us into a spacious office. Based on this look, it's not very uh, spacious, but Mr. Takeda, I presume. A partly older man sits behind an old-fashioned mahogany desk. His jowls wiggle as he offers us seats, which we both take. The walls are painted white, but one wall has a translucent sheen with Yuna's SBA submission packet projected on it. That's cool. His chair squeaks in protest as he leans forward to greet us. Miss Misaki, it's a pleasure to see you again. A again? Thank you for agreeing to meet with us, Mr. Takeda. I'd like to introduce my associate. Hi. I'm Siloclone. It's nice to meet you. He nods in acknowledgement while Yuna continues. He is here to represent his team at Ace Academy. And you are in need of a sponsor. That is correct, sir. Yes, sir. He waves a hand towards the wall and shuffles the data on there. As you can see, Miss Misaki did a detailed job of describing you and your team in your application. But I'd like to hear from you. Tell me about yourself. Uh, which part about myself? I've always had an interest in gear. I like long walks on the beach and pina coladas and getting caught in the rain. What's there to tell? This seems a little bold in here. That, that's going to be my answer. I've always had an interest in gear. I grew up in the world of gears and knew from an early age that I wanted to be a pilot. While a student at CINY, I began my program in piloting and earned top marks in all my classes. I recently transferred and tested into the pilot program at Ace Academy where I'm pursuing my degree in piloting. As a transfer student, that's not an easy program to test into. Oh, we've been made very well aware of that. He sounds impressed. We're doing good so far. Tell me, out of all your other options, why did you choose Warp Tech Corporation? Because I had no other choice. We don't want to tell him that. You're the best run. Money, money, money. Money! I didn't. I, well, let's tell, again, another bolded answer. You're the best around. It was an easy decision. Warp Tech Corporation sets the standard for gear weaponry. I read about your I read about your latest announcement of the advancement in particle technology. Same output on beam weaponry while reducing core usage by 15%. None of your competitors have made a breakthrough like that yet. There has also been some controversy over that release. 
Some are saying using the new technology will affect the longevity of a weapon, but there's no proof of that yet. I'd prefer to see evidence than believe rumors. Like, just show me it. Don't just tell me what you think's gonna happen. Just show me the facts. Show me the car facts. He nods. It's refreshing to see a young person keeping up to date with the latest releases. Hey, when you're in the world of Gears, you gotta stay up to date. I think I detect a hint of approval in his voice. It's going really well. Okay, and why should Warp Tech Corporation choose you? In other words, what sets you apart from the competition? Me. Hands down, that's what does it. We're a breath of fresh air. My team is half women. I'm international. Um, well, that's not really going to mean that. I don't think that's going to change anything because there's an all-girls team that's got a sponsor. But you know what? We're a breath of fresh air. As a new team, we aren't so set in our ways that we stifle creativity. We're not afraid to try new strategies we think will benefit the team, and we're receptive to feedback. That said, we're also acutely aware of our abilities. We work well together because we are upfront with each other, not only about our strengths, but also about our weaknesses, otherwise Kauri might kick our ass. And we use that, tech, that knowledge to our advantage. I sneak a peek at Yuna, who looks pleased, and he seems pleased too. Mr. Takeda seems to appreciate my answer as well. Well, I think I've heard enough for now. Miss Misaki, do you have a copy of your team's qualifier transcripts? I bet she sure does. She's been on top of everything. Yes, of course. She flips on her tablet and flicks the, a document onto the projected wall. The interview seems to be going well. I glance at Yuna, who smiles encouragingly at me. It's a good thing. We, we certainly need the sponsor. Mr. Takeda takes a quick glance at the file and frowns. Uh-oh. That's not good. Your team is only ranked 21. You look angry rather than just upset. You just look angry rather than just bummed. Yes, sir. He sighs and turns off the projection. You seem generally passionate about your team and your studies. And perhaps if the circumstances were different, we would consider your candidacy. Unfortunately, Warp Tech only accepts teams who are ranked within the top 10 from Ace Academy. Well, that's stupid. As I'm still processing the rejection, Yuna protests on my behalf. Mr. Takeda, couldn't you make an exception? You said yourself that if rank weren't a factor, his team would be a strong candidate. That's right, he a did. A representation by you would make a significant difference in their growth and development, and their success reflects positively on you and your company. I'm sorry, Miss Misaki. I mean, he, he, he sounds generally sorry. This kind of sucks, but... You know, he, he does seem like he, he's sorry that he has to do this. I do believe with skills like his, he will find a sponsor. Just not with us. Won't you even give him a chance? Uh, Yuna, I, I appreciate it. I don't think we want to push our luck here a little bit, though. Miss Misaki, I'm sure you understand the image that we have built and what would happen to that image if we stopped recruiting from the top ten. I thank you very much for your interest in us and wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors. Thank you, Mr. Takeda. His voice has a harsh edge of finality. He gestures towards the door, then returns his attention to his desk. You know, that, that kind of sucks, but again, I, I see his point of view from that. They've always, it sounds like Warp Tech's always taken the top 10, or always sponsored someone in the top 10, which we're not. If we were ranked 10, they'd probably have taken us without a shadow of a doubt. But in this case, they have to stay within the company guidelines and what they choose to do. It's not something he can really control. All pretenses dropped, Yuna storms out of the office while I follow calmly behind. Disappointment makes my feet feel heavy. I need that green tea latte again. She looks mad. After we leave the building, Yuna whirls to face me. It's not my fault. I didn't do it. What? A hypocrite! How can his company promote taking risks when he won't take any himself? I'm sorry you had to go through that. No, I mean, it's a good thing to go through in this. Failure is how we grow and improve. It's okay. It was a long shot anyway. Even though we didn't get the sponsorship, I still appreciate you helping me out. Don't give up just yet. I will get you a sponsor. I know you will. You, I'm, I'm sure you will, because you're just that great. I'm not sure how far positive thinking will get us. Well, that's depressing. 
leading less to the imagination might work in our favor. Uh, let's be realistic. Oh, man, none of these sound great, but... Uh, you know what? Let, let's just be realistic and look for probably... A, maybe this will... It, no, we should look at someone who's not going to be looking for a top contender because Warp Tech and Elunian probably won't sponsor a team like us with our rank. So let, let's be a little realistic here. The teams we'll need to beat are in the top 20. What are the chances of us finding a good sponsor who hasn't already been scooped up by competing teams? It's fine. I'll take care of it. I know you will. How? It's my job. Let's just go back to campus. There's work to do. Well said. You're absolutely right. We're not done just yet. We've got a lot of work to do in order to get this sponsor. Without waiting for me to answer, she hops in the back of my bike. I get on after her and start the engine. Yuna is quiet the entire ride back to campus. When we arrive, she gives me a hurried goodbye and rushes off, leaving me wondering just what she has planned. Probably something very serious. If she's got plans going, she's going to start putting them into motion. She seems like that kind of person. Well, sitting here and stewing in my thoughts isn't productive. I have some time before I need to go home. Maybe someone will be free. I don't get an option. Apparently. Apparently I just go about my own business, so what we did, I don't know. I'm in a happier mood when I arrive home. Hey guys, I'm home. You can't just decide that without telling me. Uh, I'm pretty sure I can decide when I'm saying I'm coming home. Or announcing that I'm home. I, I can pretty much do that, Uncle Kaito. Uncle Kaito's voice stops me. Oh, he's not talking to me. I could see him pacing back and forth in the kitchen. So cut it short. I didn't say anything more. This is the opening day of my new restaurant. They'll expect me to be there, and they'll expect you there, too. Why would I need to be there? As I get closer to the kitchen, I can hear a woman's voice on the other end of the line. I really don't care. Part of our arrangement was that we'd consult each other before making a decision, and you didn't. So how you're supposed to be in two places at once really isn't my problem. Okay, he's definitely not talking to me. A flurry of muffled words on the line has Uncle Ka has Kaito frowning deeper and deeper. Don't forget, we are still married. We promised to do whatever it took to make sure nothing interfered with our careers. Well, if you don't show up, then that will certainly interfere with my career. Married? Is he talking to Aunt Yuki? And he seems really upset. There's a pause. I think I hear her say, I'll see what I can do, and hang up. Yeah, you look a little upset. Uncle Kaito slams the phone onto the table, then falls into a chair and holds his head in his hands. Um, hey, Uncle Kaito. Don't you try to fake that smile to me. I can, I can tell you're upset. He glances up and gives me a weak smile. You're back. How was school today? I don't want to talk about it. It was disappointing. Good. I sit beside him. I wasn't trying to eavesdrop, which means I was eavesdropping, but I heard you talking to Aunt Yuki just now. He looks a little uneasy, but waits for me to finish. What did you mean by still married? Isn't Aunt Yuki just away on business? Sort of. Kaito sighs wearily and Kaito sighs wearily and rubs his temples. I suppose you're old enough to know the truth. I would hope so. Your aunt and I are separated. We have been for the last six months. Oh, that doesn't sound good at all. The last six months? But you aren't divorced. No. How come we didn't know? We're your family. We have to keep it quiet. Divorce is viewed differently here in Japan. It's not as common as in the States, and Yuki and I don't want our personal issues to interfere with our careers. I can kind of get that. I remembered the stories Mom told me about how difficult it was when she and Dad first got married. She couldn't have stayed in Japan even if she wanted to. If you two are just separated, does that mean Aunt Yuki is here in Izokaze? Yes. You shouldn't have lied. Does this mean I can see her? See her? I, I get it. Well, you know, 
He already knows he probably shouldn't have lied to us, at least to me, because I can understand it. Nikki, I could see kind of hiding the truth from, because she's she's a delicate little one. Does this mean I can see her? Well, duh. But I, I, I get what they're doing. I kind of get it. They want to sort through it out, see if they can get it back up and working. So I, I get it. We're going to be the adult here. I know Japan has stricter rules on family and what's proper, so I don't blame you for keeping this a secret from us. Kaito grins in relief. You don't know how much that means to me, kid. I can get it. Are you going to tell Nikki? He thinks before responding. Yes, think carefully. Yes, I will. Do you think she'll be angry you lied? Nikki has always been more sensitive than I. He shrugs. Maybe, but I think she's mature enough to understand why we did it. We can only hope, right? Yeah. It must be exhausting hiding it from everyone. It has been. Well, now you don't have to hide it around here. What did Aunt Yuki say when you told her you were we were living with you? Uh, well, about that. She doesn't know. You kind of got to tell her this one. Kaito trails off and refused to meet my eyes. She doesn't know we're here. No. Were you planning on telling her? Of course. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. You should get around to telling her that. I nod. Uncle Kaito doesn't share anymore, but I can't stop myself from asking. Since we're talking about it now, what happened between you two? He sighs. Yuki was ready to have kids, and I wasn't. We discussed the possibility of having children when we first got married, and I kept pushing it back. I wanted to focus on my career, and for a while, so did she. But? But you know how women are. At some point, their biological clock starts ticking. She didn't want to wait anymore. And you did. But you still weren't ready. No. After that huge argument, we started to drive each other crazy. I became acutely aware of all those small things Yuki did that I hated. We fought all the time, and at some point, we agreed that this wasn't working anymore. So you did kind of handle it like adults? And that's how it's been for the last six months until we can figure out a more permanent solution. <laughs> it's kind of funny that even though you weren't ready for kids, you ended up with them anyway. He grins. Uh, you guys don't count. You practically take care of yourselves. I'm just here to provide the roof. Yeah, but we're still kids. Gee, thanks. Maybe it's a good thing you didn't have kids. He laughs. So what was this phone call tonight about? Kaito turns solemn again. Part of our agreement for our separation was that we will both do whatever it takes to keep up the pretense of marriage when it involves our careers. Oh, why not? She's going on some sort of retreat with her girlfriend. Normally we consult with each other before booking any trips to prevent something like this from happening. But this time she didn't. Oh, that's bad on her. I really need her there. I'm... It sounds like in more ways than one. She'll be there. Aunt Yuki and a girl. Clearly this arrangement isn't working either. No, it, it just sounds like something may have slipped through the cracks. But I have a feeling she'll be there. Based on how we just said, you know, I really need her there. I think she knows that. And he knows, he just needs to believe it deep down. So I think she'll be there. Don't worry. Aunt Yuki won't let you down. I'm not so sure. Sounds like you two had an amic amicable separation. Yeah, that's true. Then you've got nothing to worry about. She'll be there. How can you be so sure? I'm the main character, Uncle Kaito. I'm always sure. Because she still cares for you and wouldn't want to hurt you. Kaito grins. Who knew you were such a romantic? You should tell the girls that in my school. Specifically Mayu, she's got the blue hair. What? No, oh, I wrestle bears and stuff. He laughs. I'm just teasing. Seriously. Thanks. Anytime. Uncle Kaito glances at the clock and stands. I didn't realize how late it's gotten. I have an early start tomorrow. Isn't every day an early start for you? Don't you always have an early start? You get up before I do. True, 
but I have an even earlier start than usual. That sounds gross. Ick. Yeah, I couldn't imagine that. We say goodnight, and Kaito heads upstairs. I go into the living room and turn on the TV. After watching my shows in the news, I turn in for the night. Did Nikki come home? I'm going to assume so. I wake up and yawn. Another day. Another class. As if on autopilot, I get dressed and go through my morning routine. Then I hop on my bike and drive to school. When I arrive, I head straight for class and wait for the professor. He arrives promptly and begins class. Good morning. Today we'll be discussing the differences between military grenade weaponry and those used in recreational matches. There's a difference? Yawn, I already know this. I want to learn. Well, this is news to me, so let's learn a little bit. This should be interesting stuff. I focus on the professor's lecture. The fundamental difference between the two is that military grenade weaponry are configured for energy output, which can cause lethal damage. Recreational weaponry is closely regulated, so it can't actually destroy the gear frame. That's a big difference. Since the shields on a gear get the brunt of the damage, we consider a depowered gear in recreational matches as destroyed. What if someone brought in an unregulated weapon for a match? Good question there, Jimmy. Before every match, the equipment of each gear is checked and double-checked to ensure the energy output is within proper parameters. What about the qualifier matches? There was a gear that did some energy output override thing. I have no idea what you're talking about. As one, the class looks at me. Stop looking at me. Uh... During that specific qualifier match, the gear's energy core is what served with additional power, not his weapons. Although, I must admit, I've never seen a core do that before. Hopefully, this young man can enlighten us on how he did it. Trade secret, I can't tell you. I have no idea how I do it. did it. No one finds out my secret. Why are you talking about my core? No one finds out my secret. We're just going to let him believe I actually know how to do it. Nice try. Our team isn't giving up that information. The class looks disappointed, but the professor grins. Smart move. Don't give away your advantage. Exactly. Plus, it's going to make him guess of, is he going to do it again and murder our faces? Let's get back to the lesson. He returns to his lecture. That'll make everyone think twice about asking. Once class ends, I hurry out of the room. My phone is already in my hand by the time I get outside. Let's see if anyone is free. And she's not on here. Why? Why isn't the waifu on here? Oh, fine. Um, let's see. Who do we want to bug today? No, let's bug Cowrie. We haven't bugged Cowrie just yet. It's been a little while since we've seen her, so... Cowrie. My stomach complains loudly for food. Hopefully nobody else heard that. At least I have plenty of time to grab lunch before my next class. There's a cafeteria on campus, campus which I've eaten at a couple of times. The food is cheap and surprisingly good. Way better than the cafeteria food at CINY, but the options are limited. I've heard the pilot's lunch has some decent options, and their daily specials incorporate cuisine from other cultures. Might be worth a look. I navigate to the lounge. Usually our default spot to go to. Luckily, there isn't a line, unlike the cafeteria, which would probably be out the door. I hope that's because I beat the lunch rush and not because the food is bad. Pushing those thoughts aside, I walk up to the bar. Hello, what do you have? What do we got? Hmm. I studied the limited menu on the wall. Behind the bartender is a chalkboard with the daily special written down. Cheeseburger with fries. Something healthy would be good. Hell yeah! burger and fries. I don't have a preference. You know what? Get ourselves a burger. It's been a while. It must be my lucky day. I've been craving a good burger ever since I landed in Japan. I'll have the burger with fries. How special. Burger and fries coming up. Thank you, sir. That'll be 873 credits. That's not too bad. After paying, I move over to the side and wait for my lunch. Within a few minutes, he slides over a tray with a juicy burger and a mound of fries. 
I can't wait to start eating this beast of a burger. Making my mouth water already. Picking up my tray, I scan the pilot's lounge for an empty table. Most are occupied by single students focused on their own food or studies. As I'm debating whether or not to join a random student, I spot a girl with reddish-orange hair sitting alone. It's Cowrie! I breathe out a sigh of relief and make my way over to her. It's no surprise she's sitting alone. She's probably scared everybody off. Hey! She looks up at me. Oh, hi. Don't sound so amused to see me. Mind if I sit here? She shakes her head. Thanks! I place my tray to next to her bento and sit down. Carrie refocuses on her meal and eats in silence. So, about that local sports team, or some weather we have here. This is pretty awkward. Speak up, stay quiet. You know what, let's just speak up. We don't really know much about Cowrie. So, how are things? Good. Well, that's, uh, angry good. She doesn't even bother looking at me. Um, and what do you think about the weather today? Adequate. This is seriously like pulling teeth. I shouldn't be surprised, though. It's Cowrie, after all. Small talk is not her forte. I pick up a ketchup packet and squeeze the contents over my fries. You're really eating that? I ate most of it already, so yes. Huh? Carrie's finally looked up from her food and examines my meal. Burgers are very unhealthy. They are full of fat and very high in calories. Why do you think I'm eating it? The fries are even worse. Those are just empty carbs. And the average meal holds the amount of sodium an average person needs in a day. Well, it's a good thing I'm not average and don't care. Tastes delicious. This, it tastes delicious. You're exaggerating, you know, but it tastes so good. That's what makes it taste so good. Kara leans back in disappointment and shrugs. Whatever. It's your choice. True. I glance at her bento. It has an assortment of simple maki rolls. I'm just glad I'm eating this instead of that. I really am. Well, sometimes it's nice to eat something tasty for a change. Why? This is a... Okay. What's going on here? She frowns in irritation. I... There's a difference between normal cowrie and irritated cowrie. That just looks like her normal face. What makes you think my bento isn't tasty? Because it has fish to it, and I don't like fish. I take another look at it, then smirk. You don't need to get so defensive. I'm sure it's healthy, but that thing barely looks seasoned. Um, what? Carrie shoves a maki roll into my mouth while I'm mid-sentence. Don't judge it until you've tried it. Okay. I'm just a little in shock as to what just happened. Wow! This is surprisingly delicious. It's simple with... It's light with simple ingredients, but each bite is still packed with flavor. Kara retra quickly retracts her chopsticks. Once she realizes what she's done, her cheeks flush. She's warming up to us. It actually was pretty good. You win this time. Ha! I guess I was wrong. Huh. Guess I was wrong. Give me another piece. You win this time. You know what? We'll, we'll give her the satisfaction. You win this time. I'll admit. That was not bad. She waves a hand dismissively. Next time, don't jump to conclusions. Whatever. I grudgingly admit to that Cowrie is right. Although, I would have never guessed she'd be such a talented cook. And clearly embarrassed by the way she's acting, we end up finishing our meals in silence, but I'm glad I was able to learn a little bit more about Kauri. Seeing as she doesn't say much of anything, I'm in the campus gym finishing up my workout. Gotta work off that burger. And that bento. When I return to my locker, there's a miss, mix, missed text from Kauri. Emergency meeting, meet in the hangar. Meet now in the hangar. Jeez. All caps. 
I'd better get going. Wonder what this could be about. I arrive at the hangar about the same time as Sho and Mayu. Kauri waits impatiently in front of her gear. Finally! That took you a while. Okay. I just saw your text. It, I might have gotten a little distracted. What are you talking about? I'm on time. I just saw your text and came as quickly as I could. Calm down. I literally came here as soon as I got your text. I texted before heading over here so we'd be on time. Oh, well, we didn't know that you were on your way. I guess you walk faster than me. Kauri addresses the rest of the team. What about you guys? <laughs> Sorry. We were having lunch, and I guess we lost track of time. Plus, you said it was an emergency meeting. This wasn't planned. Kauri blinks, then waves her hand dismissively. Never mind. We have more important things to discuss. Like our sponsor situation. Yeah, I don't want to talk about that. Everyone becomes serious. Our gears need a lot of maintenance to return to peak fighting condition. And the next round is tomorrow. Say what now? I don't know why, but everyone I talked to was really rude and unhelpful. That sounds like such a surprise. I couldn't figure out... I can't figure out what the problem could have been. Sho and I share a knowing glance, and Kauri catches us. What? Nothing. Nothing, nothing. I wish to live, so I'm saying absolutely nothing. She continues to stare. It's just, sometimes you can come across a little harsh. Just a little bit. A little bit. I'm just honest. Sure, but honesty doesn't make people like you. You need to get in touch with your soft, warm, feminine side. Carrie raises an eyebrow. Is that what you do? He does that all the time, it seems. Yes. Uh, I mean to the warm thing, not the soft and feminine thing. I don't believe you. We stare at him blankly. Uh, I'm just going to shut up now. You know you've said something stupid when even Mayu's staring at you. Before you do, did you manage to get a sponsor? He folds his hand behind, hands behind his head and leans into them. Nope. You forgot to ask around, didn't you? Probably. Maybe. He looks sheepish. Cowrie rolls her eyes. What about you, Mayu? Can your father sponsor us? Mayu shakes her head. Dang, that would have been a cool sponsor. Unfortunately, he's backing the team I was originally supposed to join. When I was invited onto the team, father was so happy. He promised he'd sponsor them. Even though I never joined them, he can't go back on his promise. I can get that. Especially with as, you know, influential of a guy as he is and how big of a name he is, he can't back out in that. Plus then it would be showing favoritism to his daughter and... Sorry, that world's not going to work too well if he starts doing that. Make them the question of everything. Carrie nods and faces me. You had that interview yesterday, didn't you? Yes... Yeah, I went to the interview with Warp Tech. It didn't work out. Why am I not surprised? Because we're ranked 21. It had less to do with me and more to do with our team status. I could show you the full report from the SBA if you want to know the official reason, but basically, we weren't a high enough rank. I fished my phone out of my pocket. It flashes low battery warnings at me before it dies completely. Well, that's not good. Where's the report? Uh, hold on. I have to charge my phone. My gaze lands on my gear. I race to it and head into the cockpit. My team calls after me, but I ignore them. Focused on what I'm doing, once I plug my phone into the dock connection, it lights up with the charging symbol. What are those looks for? Everyone's wearing confused faces when I climb out of the cockpit. What? Didn't you just use an outlet? Um, it doesn't look like there are any. Maya points to an outlet on the wall. Never seen that before. When did those get here? You mean this isn't what gears are for? Who cares if I use an outlet or my gear? Uh, I don't think any answer is going to be a good one here. We're going to just kind of play with, uh, you know what? Who cares if I use an outlet or my gear? Because I can. That's stupid. 
You're stupid. I made my choice and I'm standing by it. Besides, an outlet doesn't do me any good if I don't have a phone charger with me. Oh, I suppose that makes sense. See? Mayu gets it. Anyway, I guess we're back to square one. I don't think we ever left square one. Back? We never left square one. That scares me that I'm on the same page as Shope. Don't give up hope just yet. I might have something. Another meeting? No, but my friend in the SBA is still helping us search. Okay. In the meantime, the rest of us should continue our search, too. That, I guess we, that's what we have to do. I'll take another look at what Ace offers. Maybe there's some kind of campus grant or funding we can apply for. Mayu, do you think you could reach out to some of the other major corporations we haven't talked to yet? Maybe with your background, you'll have more luck than we would. Absolutely, because she knows famous people. Mayu nuns. Maybe Sho can ask around local businesses? Another good idea? Okay. Do it this time, though. Good idea. Hey, she's smiling. She was smiling again. Kari looks at me. I'll follow up with my contact. She nods. Hopefully, we'll find someone. But there's a chance we might have to fight with our gears as is. That's not going to be good. I'm confident we'll get someone in time. Mayu smiles at me and nods. Show claps me on the back. Okay, we have our plan. Text me if you guys get any leads. Will do. We all nod. I'm off then. I've got some stuff to take care of. I hope you mean reaching out to the businesses, show and not playing the video games. Yes, yeah, show. No video games. Of course that's what I meant. The arcade industry is a lucrative place to find a sponsor. I'm gonna hit him. Mayu sighs. Show. He wears his signature smile. Okay, okay. Let's go find us a sponsor. Good man. Mayu beams. The pair wave at us before heading out. I'll be going too. Tell me if your friend is successful. I just said I would do that. I nod and Kauri leaves. Nothing left for me to do but go home. An uneventful drive later, I arrive at home, and we're going to see what the evening brings next time. I'm going to end the episode here. A little bit of a disappointing day, but learning a bit more about Mayu and Kauri even, too, which is good. We want to learn more about our team and how every one of them works and thinks and their preferences as well outside of just being pilots. As always, though, if you did enjoy the video, make sure to let me know by hitting that like button down below or leaving a comment. And if you're new to the channel or haven't done so already, unleash your power by hitting that subscribe button down below today as well, and I will see all you heroes in the next video. Thanks so much for watching. May the Force be with you, and have a great rest of your day. Take care.